Okay, I'm gonna warn you all right now, this video is going to be very, very niche. I had a little free time after school today and I was messing around with some of my old data packs that I've released in the past, and I believe I have stumbled upon a breakthrough, specifically in the very specific field of scoreboard objective tracking. So I'm back in this super flat world because this is where I actually hosted my game of life video from a few months ago, and that data pack, along with three others that I released kind of around the same time, all had one thing in common, and that is that they used it on a stick to point and place things. The other three data packs are the health bars, I should probably adjust how high up these things are, the lootable pots, which as of a recent snapshot has actually been rendered completely obsolete, although this is not the snapshot, I needed to prove that my data pack was still working, and finally the mini blocks data pack where I can use a carrot on a stick to click on glass and then build with tiny little blocks inside that glass. Now all four of these data packs have one crucial thing in common, and that is that at least some part of their functionality requires the player to use a carrot on a stick to click and point at stuff. Now like I said, I released these data packs a really long time ago, and I kind of just released them and realized that they all worked on their own and didn't really think there were any problems, until recently I was just kind of thinking about it for a while, and I realized that if you actually wanted to use more than one of these data packs at once, for whatever reason, one data pack's carrot on a stick functionality would completely disable that of a different one. So it's entirely possible that I was able to place down a build space for the mini blocks, but that makes me completely unable to click on entities and give them health bars or vice versa, depending on the order in which I loaded the data packs. Now the reason for this problem is a bit technical, but it is very important to today's video, so bear with me, I'm going to explain why this happens. As hopefully most of you will know, uh, carrot on a stick tracking is tracked by a scoreboard objective. Whenever I click with the carrot on a stick, it triggers a scoreboard objective, which the data pack can then detect and run functions after it detects that. Now the most important part of this is at the end, when you're done running your functions, you have to make sure you reset that scoreboard objective so that the next tick it doesn't get detected all over again. But this is where the problem comes from. If I have more than one of these data packs enabled at once, all of the tick commands from one data pack will be run, and then once that's done, all of the tick commands from the next data pack will be run, and so on and so forth. But because the end of the tick command from the first data pack ends up resetting my score, the second data pack now can no longer detect that I had that score triggered in the first place. So I've essentially used up my use of a carrot on a stick from one data pack and the other ones can no longer detect it. This is true even if I'm using different carrot on a sticks because the scoreboard objective is triggered no matter what data I have on that carrot. It's up to the data pack to decide whether or not it's a valid carrot on a stick but regardless of if it's valid or not, it still has to clear the scoreboard objective so it doesn't keep checking from then on out every tick afterward. The upshot of which is as soon as you reset it, the other data packs won't be able to detect anything at all. So they're pretty much disabled. If you have a whole bunch of these data packs working in tandem, only one of them will be functional, and that will be the first one that you loaded. At least, that's how it was until today. Now I know a lot of you are probably screaming at your screens right now, but Kanye, why can't we just make multiple different scoreboard objectives with different names? And yes, that would work, but it breaks a few of my ironclad rules that I like to stick to. First off, I'm incredibly lazy, I don't like coming up with names for things, I like using the same scoreboard objective over and over and over, uh, and the real reason I do that, besides just being lazy and not wanting to come up with names, is that I don't really like crowding out the scoreboard. I don't like having too many objectives on the scoreboard at once. Now, if you still don't trust me, and you still want to use different scoreboard objectives, that's totally fine, but I implore you to stick it out to the end of this video, because I found a fix where A, I don't have to use multiple scoreboard objectives, and B, it actually causes another crazy side effect that you're all gonna love. So just hear me out on my really, really weird fix for this problem. So basically what I have done is kind of invented a new formalism, so to speak, for data pack scoreboard tracking. Now it's something that I came up with actually when I made my Waystone video a few weeks ago, but today was the first time I ever actually tested it out and saw that its intended functionality is truly powerful, and it compelled me enough to the point that I wanted to make this video. So I'm just gonna go ahead and show you what it is. It's a little bit hard to explain without just showing. Here are all four of those data packs, and I actually do have them loaded on this server all at the same time right now. I'm gonna just go ahead and pick uh, mini blocks because that's my favorite one. Basically what I've done is I've gone in to the data folder. I've created my own new namespace just under my name, 
uh, and I want to make sure that this namespace does not feel tied to any one particular data pack. It's kind of a namespace that I'm going to be universally using for Carrot on a Stick from now on. So I'll just go under Conyers, Functions, Objectives, right? So Conyers Objectives is the quote-unquote namespace that I'm using here. And you'll see in this Objectives folder I have three different functions that kind of have similar names, uh, and they all are relating to the Carrot on a Stick. So use.carrotonastick.load is listed in the Minecraft load tag, so it gets run every time the data pack is started up for the first time. And it basically just adds a new scoreboard objective that tracks when I use a Carrot on a Stick. And the name of that objective is use.carrotonastick. And then I also have this other line to just reset in case anyone had a lingering value of that command when the data pack first starts up. And then I have this other command that is used at on a stick dot tick. Now this is set into the Minecraft tick function tag, so this one will actually be the command that is running every single tick. And this one basically just looks for players that have that scoreboard objective triggered and then runs the next function on them. Objective slash just use dot carrot on a stick. Now I know this seems a little bit circular and it seems kind of like way too verbose, but I'll explain in a minute why I have so many different files and why all, so many of them all look the same. This next function that it runs is right here. Basically what this one does is it just resets your carrot on a stick score first and then it calls a function tag. Now other than Minecraft load and Minecraft tick, up until this point, I had never actually been able to think of a reason for why function tags should even exist in the first place. As of this breakthrough, I am incredibly glad they exist because this completely would not be possible without them. Now this function tag, as I've kind of alluded to, is the most important part here. I'll go ahead and exit out of this function, go back a little bit, and under Conyers namespace I still have tags, functions, objectives, and then I have the actual tag itself, objective slash use dot carrot on a stick. Now this is where all this crazy formalism actually goes back and ties into the original data pack that I was modifying in the first place. So this is mini blocks, and the function that I listed inside this tag is just called minis slash uh, util slash used carrot. Basically it's just the function within the mini blocks data pack that handles whenever I click with my carrot. And just to be absolutely clear on how that actually works, I'll just go ahead and show you that function as well. Really the most important thing is that it tests if I have used the right carrot, right? So inside this function, it starts out saying execute if data, if I have a selected item with this made up tag that I made up to signify that this is the right carrot on a stick for the mini blocks data pack. And if I don't have that, then it just doesn't continue. It doesn't do anything else. Now the reason this function got called in the first place, if you can think back to a couple of files ago, is because in the Conyers namespace, in functions, in objectives, the tick function detected that I had used the caret. This function cleared the scoreboard objective and called the function tag, and the function tag called that mini blocks function. Okay, so you may be thinking that's all well and good, but that's really convoluted, don't you think? I mean, I could have just directly called that mini blocks function from the tick, so what gives? Well, again, like I said, the magic here is in function tags themselves. This is not the only data pack that has a tag with this exact same name, Conyers objective slash use dot carrot on a stick. If I go into another one of my data packs, let's say game of life, for example. Again, you'll see the Conyers namespace. I can go to tags, functions, objectives, use dot carrot on a stick. Look, it's exactly the same tag, except this tag has a different function in it. It calls a function relevant to the Game of Life data pack. Now, as with all tags, function tags are additive. Now, what does that mean? If more than one data pack defines exactly the same tag, then the values field actually gets added to the values field of whatever else is defining this same tag. Now this only happens if I don't set replace to true, and I have actually explicitly written replace false in order to drive this point home. You don't actually have to write replace false, it defaults to false, but I really really just wanted to show how important that part is. This data pack specifies life slash util slash use caret. Great. The mini blocks data pack specifies minis util slash use caret. The health bars data pack specifies health bars colon use pointer, which yeah, okay, my naming convention is really, really not consistent, sue me. And finally, lootable pots specifies loot pots handle click. Now the crazy thing about this is because tags are additive, the real tag, given that all four of these data packs are present, will just be one tag containing all four of those values. Even though I don't have a single file that specifies all four, 
The additive property of tags makes it so the final tag, once all four of these data packs are loaded, has all four of those functions in it. They do not overwrite each other, like every other type of data pack file in the game other than tags would. So you see now that if I had simply defined these in a function rather than a function tag, they would have been overwriting each other. And there would have been no way to have a single function that contained all four of those functions. Now, on that topic, let's actually look back in the Conyers namespace under functions slash objectives. These three are not tags. These are just functions. And I'm in a different data pack now, but if I open this file up and I open the other files up, you'll see that these files are exactly identical. There's not a single character difference between two of these data packs in these three files. These three files are in fact designed to overwrite each other. And because they all say the same thing, well, when one gets overwritten, it just gets overwritten with the same thing. So no harm, no foul. But Here's the crazy upshot of that, like I mentioned earlier, I wanted you to bear with me because this next part is awesome. As you all know, tracking scoreboard objectives requires constant ticking commands using the Minecraft tick function tag. But the thing about this is, if you specify this same file under Minecraft tick in multiple data packs, because it's the same function, like I said, it overwrites all of the other functions that have exactly the same name. So the crazy thing is, even though I have all four of these data packs loaded at the same time, there is only ever one command per tick that tests for carrot on a stick stuff. And that one command per tick actually handles all four data packs at the same time. It's crazy. So if you have data packs that only run one command per tick to test for carrot on a stick, and you use this formalism, well, multiple data packs that all test for carrot on a stick again, will only share one command per tick, even if you have multiple of them loaded at the same time. Now, one on its own will run one command per tick, but from then on out, adding more will not add any more commands per tick. It's amazing, and I am so obsessed with this, and I'm freaking out about it right now. Now, granted, I'm not really sure why you would want to use any of these data packs at the same time. I mean, they're all really niche. Especially Game of Life is meant to specifically be run in this world, but this is meant to be a generalized concept. Like, for example, I actually invented this formalism back when I made Waystones. Waystones doesn't use carrot on a stick, but it does use an objective to test when you open a written book. So if I ever add another survival data pack that also tests when you open books, well, using that one alongside Waystones will make it so that those two share only one command per tick. And yeah, that's really about it. That's the big breakthrough. Um, like I said, I knew this was definitely going to be really niche. The target audience for this video consists of specifically data pack developers who are interested in scoreboard tracking and who are also interested in making data packs compatible and as optimized as possible. Now like I said toward the beginning of the video, one other possible alternative to solving that problem that I started out by mentioning is just to make a different scoreboard objective for every data pack. That totally works. But I think this way is just a lot more elegant. It kind of introduces a formalism and it is great for reducing the number of commands per tick that your data packs actually run. So, now that we've got all of that out of the way, let's just go through basically the gist of what actually happens every tick, just to absolutely clarify what's going on. Every tick, Minecraft runs this function along with any other tick functions that are not related to the carrot on a stick, and when this function gets run, a whole bunch of interesting things happen. First of all, the function that actually runs once per tick only contains one command. It looks for players that have triggered the objective and then runs the next function on them. Now the reason there is a next function in the first place is because this next function actually contains two commands. It both resets their scoreboard objective and runs the big function tag on them. Now, I could have also reduced the number of files in the data pack by also putting this reset in the tick, but that would have actually meant that there were now two commands running every tick, one to test for all the players that had the objective, and then one to reset all the players that had the objective. This way, there's an extra file, but there's just one less command per tick. And then, because of the way the data pack specify what is in that tag, simply running this tag actually causes every data pack to search for if they've used the correct carrot on a stick all at once, and they don't have to worry about continuously checking whether or not you've had the objective triggered, because again, the first thing that kicked all this off in the first place was that an objective trigger was detected by this command. So it causes all data packs to function properly despite all sharing the exact same objective name, and it reduces their collective carrot on a stick commands per tick down to just one for all of the data packs that you're using. And I think that's pretty cool. I've been Conyer, thank you so much for watching.